happy souls. Welcome back to my channel. This is Charlotte with Happy Twins 1111. Welcome to all of my new subscribers and a big shout out to all of my loyal long time subscribers that have been with me through this journey. I appreciate you all so much. Okay, I've got three paths for you today and I love these readings because this is just a, a timeless love reading. We're just asking what does spirit need you to know about your love life right now? So I have the Star Child Tarot with twin quartz this one's called this might hurt tarot but please don't be put off by the title it's a very normal deck <laughs> and this one's with amethyst and then i have the crystal unicorn tarot with clear quartz hexagon so take your time choosing a pile there's no right or wrong way just see whichever one you're drawn to if you're drawn to more than one there may be messages in more than one pile for you and that's okay so let's do this i'm going to move piles two and three out of the way and let's see what we've got for you. Par one, star chart tower with twin quartz. Let's see what spirit needs you to know about love right now. And I did mention this in my reading yesterday, but in case you missed it, don't forget that I am launching new classes this week. If you would like to be one of the first to get a heads up when they're launched so you can bag see your place, then you can subscribe to my website or join my Facebook group. I will announce the classes and webinars there first. Um, there will be a variety of new classes, which I'm very excited about. So if you would like to learn with me, make sure you subscribe so you get that notification. I will announce them on my YouTube channel shortly afterwards. Um, but I'm very, very excited to be introducing some new classes and um, can't wait to share that with you. Okay, let's do this part one. We have got the High Priestess in reverse, the Ace of Swords, Perspective, which is the Hanged Man in reverse, the King of Pentacles in reverse, the Queen of Pentacles, the Nine of Swords in reverse, well, two came out there, two of ones in reverse and the sun in reverse. Right, so I'm going to get some of these cards as well. This is the Work Your Light Oracle by Rebecca Campbell. She's actually the same artist that um, created these. Mirrors, who or what is triggering you? And Council of Light, Divine Orchestration, Helpers in the Subtle Realms. Transformation, things are changing at a cellular level. Deep healing. Star mother, how can you mother yourself? Okay, and I'm also going to use some of these cards that I created for myself. Um, they're just blanks that I wrote on. If you would like to create some of these for yourself, you can buy these really cheaply on Amazon. So these ones are messages from Spirit. And we've got... Their karma is none of your business. Focus on your own lessons. Your soul is calling you. Answer the call. Your ego is louder than your heart right now. Surrender some more. Healing is an infinite process. Okay, let me just check that all of these are in shot. And just nudge it down a touch. There we go. Now you can see everything. Okay, part one, what does spirit need you to know about love? The high priestess in reverse. It feels like you're very much disconnected from your soul's purpose right now. You're not listening to the signs, you're not listening to the guidance that spirit is trying to communicate with you as far as this connection is concerned. It feels like with the queen of pentacles in, um, here, that you are very much focused on your 3D reality. This is work, home. You're very much distracting yourself from the spiritual nature of your journey. It feels like you may have even rejected or abandoned the journey or your spiritual self and divinity. So there's definitely um, a focus here on trying to control things externally. And that's to say, you know, by communicating with people um, 
to try and get them to see and do what you want them to do. Just trying to control things in an external way rather than trusting in the divine plan, rather than trusting that, you know, everything is as it's actually meant to be. Your only job is to accept it and to work with it and to grow within your current circumstances rather than to try and premeditate or control the outcome of the situation. It does say here as well that karma is none of your business. Focus on your own lessons. And with the Queen of Pentacles coming up, this can also mean the wife card. So it may be that you've been very focused on your person's third party situation. You know, you want to know what's happening. You want to know when it's over. It feels like for some of you, there's definitely a fixation there. Um, that's not going to resonate for all of you, but you know, with this, the karma is none of your business card. It does feel like your, you know, your your focus is outside of you when it should be on going within. The Ace of Swords. Your soul is calling you. Answer the call. Now, the Ace of Swords is all about truth and communication, and again, it feels like you have so much support and love. And healing at your disposal but you're not tapping into it with the nine of swords in reverse clarifying this card this feels to me like you know there are opportunities to relieve the stress and the, the anxiety that exists in your 3d reality at the moment it's through acknowledging this truth of your divinity and of who you are and tapping into that infinite flow of unconditional love and light and healing that you're going to find the respite the solace and the peace that you need to feel good and I'm you know I'm hearing that you don't feel good right now that actually you know you're kind of papering over the cracks as far as your um, progress is concerned there feels like a very strong resistance here to accept your own divinity and to really um, to really choose this path and to commit yourself to it um, you may think that you're committed to your person. Um, and obviously my readings are twin flame soulmates focused. We've got the mirror card here. So, you know, undoubtedly you are experiencing a soulful connection here. But there is a need to surrender to what that connection really means rather than just trying to look at this as a, a normal 3D relationship in which you just want, you know, to, to be together with that person. This isn't what this journey is about for you. This journey is about growth and expansion and, you know, embodying the light is about ascension, sorry, ascension and your awakening. We've also got the hanged man in reverse. You know, for me, this is where that resistance to the surrender energy is. And it does say here, surrender some more. Healing is an infinite process. And this is a very twinny symbol, as you can see here. You know, there's this um, mirror image you see in the background, even reflected here in the water, which represents our emotional natures. Um, and it's clarified by the two of wands, which again tells me that you're not choosing to surrender, that you're not seeing um, the need to do that. And it might feel like you, you think you've already, already surrendered. Um, in real terms, if you had surrendered, you wouldn't be focusing on someone else's karma or fixated on it this feels like a huge distraction for you and it does say here that your ego is louder than your heart right now so it just feels like I'm just going to get a couple of cards for your person as well I want to know what they want to say to you um, because they're certainly triggering you mirror who or what is triggering you now this is a stage or a period of deep transformation that you're going through and um yeah, it just feels like you need to readjust your focus. I don't know what a healthy relationship looks like. I need more time to learn. I haven't forgotten you. I think about you all the time. This is a new beginning. There is no going back. And I want to make up for all the time. I was meant to be holding you. I'm just going to get a couple of clarifiers here as well. <clears throat> so... It feels like you have been in separation with this person for a long time and they've recently come back into your life and they have triggered you quite hard. It feels like they're certainly still in a relationship. Let me just quickly ask a couple of questions about this. So what does this new beginning pertain to? We've got the star in reverse. So it's about faith. It's about 
readjusting your perception of this journey, which at the moment feels hopeless and restoring faith and optimism. Yeah, it's, it feels like with the four of swords in reverse that you're just, you're almost done thinking about it. You know, it feels like you've thought, stuff this spiritual stuff, stuff this person that's not coming to me or that's rejected me or has gone to someone else. I'm out, I'm not doing this anymore, I'm done. And yet here you are watching this reading. Okay, so you're not done. As much as we would like to be, we're never done because this isn't something you can walk away from. It will haunt you till the day you die. And you can keep going around in circles as long as you like. You have free will. No one can force you to take this path, but the path will continue to call you until you answer the call. This person will be on your mind relentlessly until you answer the call and recognize you know, what you have chosen for yourself in this lifetime. So I want to know as well what's happening with this karmic, <laughs> the Queen of Wands, and the Akashic Records. So, you know, they have karma to resolve. Um, the Queen of Wands for me, I mean, this isn't necessarily an ill-dignified card. This is Pisces, Aries energy. Um, I'm really drawn to the fact that there's a dog here. This person is very loyal. Um, to their karmic partner. And with the Akashic Records card coming up, I'm really feeling like there's still unresolved, unspent karma there. And that actually this person has a, a karmic agreement to be loyal to a point within this connection. The connection needs to serve its purpose. You know, this is some kind of karmic retri retribution that they're paying off. And I'm hearing that this karmic partner is quite toxic. You know, that they, they're not necessarily the most easy person to be with. But this person has to master that and has to, has to rise above that on their own. So that's not where your focus needs to be. I ask because I know you want to know. <laughs> but the need to know is actually born of our ego. And it does say here your ego is louder than your heart right now. You know, your ego is the part that wants to control this. Your ego is the part of you that is furious that this person has chosen someone else above you. Your ego is the part of you that is furious that this person doesn't give you what you need or meet your expectations. That's all fear-based stuff that resides in ego. And we have been conditioned and taught that that's a normal, normal thing to occur in a relationship. And so a lot of people come back and say, well, what are you talking about? I've just got healthy boundaries. I've just got normal expectations. This is how the world, whole world feels about monogamy and relationships. But you are here to explore a new way of being as far as love's concerned, which is much healthier. It's non-attached, healthy detachment and loving without conditions. Um, there's an article on my website called Return to One. It may help you to read that. You know, I don't want to take up your whole reading explaining this, but you are being asked to surrender some more. Now, in real terms, your person isn't at all happy in the situation they're in and they do recognize the need for transformation but with this mirror card of who or what is triggering you it's very necessary right now for you to be triggered and all of these ugly feelings that are coming up through your ego are actually showing you where you need to heal and again you know this is a mirror image card that we're seeing here who or what is triggering you and trust that this is for your highest good i know it's hard i know it doesn't always feel good but this person is simply doing their job you know, but they are very much out of balance right now. They're not able to offer you the commitment you need. I feel like they're barely um, living up to the commitment they're already, you know, residing in. For some of you, there's a problem in that relationship pertaining to children, that, that, that they don't have children or they can't have children, or there's a blockage somehow because of the children. Perhaps this person feels they can't leave because of the children. But there is also some truth that has not yet been illuminated to them that is going to kind of create some pretty dramatic shifts. And it does say that things are changing at a cellular level. You know, deep healing is occurring here. And if you've been very emotional, you know, kind of very up and down, um, you know, that's pretty normal when you're moving through the ascension process. But, you know, this person... They do need that time to learn. They think about you all the time. And there is a new beginning happening here, even if it doesn't seem that way. And they do want to make it up to you. You know, this is a beautiful card to come out. This person thinks about you. They want you. They want to hold you. They want to make it up to you. But right now, you've got to make it up to yourself. You've got to start 
tuning in to your own spiritual counsel and your own guidance because it is divinely orchestrated as it says here help us in the subtle realms there is a whole team of people um, on your side that are just waiting to show you love to show you how to heal to show you where you need to heal and to help guide you through this this journey along the right path that's you know designed in intrinsic ways just for you how can you mother yourself you know, you are being asked to reparent yourself and that's about focusing on the inner child wound. So you may find that you have blockages in the root chakra, which is where we saw all of our childhood wounding, all of the trauma that we went through in our earlier years. And if you have issues with your own mother and there's resentment and bitterness there and you don't feel that you were parented in a loving and appropriate way, it can be really easy to fall into bitterness and resentment about that and to... To, to keep demanding or expecting and wanting and needing, you know, that, that gentle mothering from your primary caregiver, you know, even if you're an adult, that those wounds stay with us a long time. But, you know, the truth is that you can start to mother yourself and that's where your power is, that you can learn to give yourself this love. You can learn to self-soothe and to help you move into a much healthier mindset and to, to start working with that inner child you know, to start empowering yourself to feel good. Now is not the time to take action in this connection. If you've been feeling the urge to reach out, and I'm feeling that this may have been, you know, quite fiery, you know, there's quite a lot of um, drive and passion, but a frustrated kind of angry passion behind this. You know, the guidance is that right now you need to to focus on your own journey, you need to focus on surrendering and healing and to accepting what is. I do feel like this person will reach out to you in the short term and these are going to be fairly fun, casual, flirty messages, somewhat reassuring but perhaps, you know, not what you need but I do feel like this person has learned to respect your boundaries in terms of how this connection works from a sexual perspective. I feel like you drew a line in the sand with that. And they have no intention of trying to, <clears throat> trying to, um, what's the word? Challenge your boundaries. But there is some unresolved trauma here that needs to come up that's buried beneath the surface that you've been afraid to confront. What's this about? Yeah, so it's a soulmate card, the Six of Cups. So this is about the lack of union. You know, I feel like you've wanted to give this person an ultimatum and you may have done that already. If you don't leave that person, if you won't come forward, I'm not waiting for you, I'm moving on. You know, if you don't do this, it's, it's an ultimatum of some sort. Um, and you're not really allowing yourself to express the real grief that lies behind all of this energy and ego, which is actually rooted in childhood. You know, those abandonment and rejection wounds are in fact nothing to do with your person. They're just here to trigger those wounds so that they can be brought into your awareness for healing. But it does feel like there's resistance in you to that happening. You need to let it go. You need to release it. So what else do you need to know about this connection you're in right now? The Ten of Cups. It is going to move towards the direction of union. And I feel like you know, you needed to know that to help restore your faith. Because remember, this is what's switching for you, is the star. You know, you've got to start believing. I've realized as I've moved along this journey that faith is perhaps the most important aspect of our growth. That despite all else, if you can hold on to faith, um and to, to focus on faith, you're going to make this journey a lot easier for yourself because it's the doubt, it's the feeling that we're never going to get what we want that actually causes us so much pain. You know, if someone could say to you categorically, you're going to be in union by X state, the weight would be significantly less painful. Now, spirit is never that specific, unfortunately, but the Ten of Cups is a pretty powerful um, sign that this is something you can look forward to and if you refer to yourself as a twin flame or soulmate if you demonstrate acceptance for that label as a as a um, as a description of what you're going through on this journey then you need to understand that to be a twin flame means to share your soul with another person to be eternally connected to them and also to accept the theory that 
you, the universe is constantly conspiring to bring you back together, that that is your sole mission, that is your higher purpose, and that is the, the, the end goal for all concerned. That's what you're meant to be doing. What people forget is they get frustrated that they have to go on this journey to get there. You know, well, why can't it just be like, you know, boy meets girl, we all get on nicely, we get married, live happily ever after. That's not how this journey works. This journey asks you to come into union with yourself first. And if you're holding frustration, impatience, resentment about that process, you're eventually, you're essentially stalling your own progress. So there is some reassurance here that, you know, you will come into union in this lifetime. But right now, and there are three people in this card, three being the maiden mother crone, divine feminine, empress energy, the energy of creation, you, you create that union by bringing yourself into balanced union with self. Yeah, you're, you're more in control of this path than you realize, but you're trying to control it through your external world. Whereas in reality, you control it from within. And spirit is warning you that there is a lot of pent up grief here that needs to be released, that you need to let go of, and that you need to surrender to this. The lovers in reverse. So union is coming, but now is not the time. It's not meant for you right now. Right now, your soul is calling you. And you need to answer that call and get to grips with what's required of you to move through this path a bit more gracefully. Again, if you can't do that, you're going to go round and round in circles. And we've got the Empress. What a powerful lineup. You know, this is about stepping into your divine feminine energy, recognizing that that is only the true power you have. That's where all of your true power is in being able to love self in being able to choose and hold the energy that you decide. Now, that does take practice, but without practice, it's not going to happen. And if you can't commit to this path, you know, you're going to stay in this very bitter, frustrated energy of ego with no faith, you know, constantly doubting because you say I'm a twin flame, but then as soon as your twin flame runs or they're not doing what you want them to do or they're not giving you what you think you deserve... Your ego kicks in and says, I'm not doing this anymore. I'm done. I don't want to do this. This journey sucks. Yeah. I do feel like there's a lot of anger here. There's a tremendous amount of anger here. So what can you do to support this connection for the highest good? We know that you need to work on yourself. Yeah, again, so there's another message here about not reaching out, not giving too much. Um... You know, I feel like when you become emotionally invested in this connection, it does start to kind of disable all of your earthly stability. And that's to say, I do feel like you're a very accomplished, balanced, stable person when it comes to your 3D reality. You know, you take great pride in caring for your home, in working hard, in providing for yourself, but you get tangled up in this egoic energy of needing and wanting from this other person, that it kind of knocks everything out of sync. And so you have these dips in feeling good and it brings your 3D reality into kind of a more disturbed, turbulent state. So through your expression of your divinity and your connection to your divine empress energy, your creative energy, you can begin to manifest more consistency and stability in your 3D realms, and you can begin to manifest the life you want. You need to take your focus off union and off this person and put it squarely on yourself. I'm going to get one final guidance card here. We've got the two of swords in reverse. Now is not the time um, to labor about what's going to happen with this connection in future. You know, it feels like you've been indecisive for a long time, but what the cards are saying is you don't need to be decisive. You know, neither decision or indecision supports you right now. Right now, what you're being called to do is to accept what is, to surrender to the present energies and to work with them, to, to recognize what these triggers that are being presented are asking of you and your growth, and to be able to really process those lessons and to you know, start making the progress that is eventually going to support your ongoing ascension. So towards union. So I really hope that helped part one. There is no extended reading today. 
but I will see you for one of those tomorrow. Thank you so much for tuning in. If you did enjoy this reading, please do tap the like button. It really does help my channel to grow and I'm so grateful. And if you would like to subscribe, you can make sure that you get updated every time I post. So tap the little bell icon so you get those notifications and I will see you next time. And don't forget as well that you can join me on Instagram. Um, at Happy Souls 1111. I do do mini readings over there. I'm not as active as I am here. I try to be. And um, these are funny ed energies we're navigating at the moment, and I do feel them too. I think a lot of you seem to think sometimes that I'm superhuman, but I'm not. I'm just as infallible. I wobble. I freak out. I get pissed off. <laughs> you know, we're all on this journey. It's not easy for anyone. Okay. Thank you so much. Part two. Hello, part two. You've chosen the It Might Hurt Tarot with Amethyst. And we are asking today, what does spirit want you to know in love? So let's give these a really good shuffle because it's a new deck. I haven't actually used it yet. This is an independently created deck. They're usually my favourites just because they're so unusual. Although some of them do make it to the mainstream. Um, but they're bloody expensive. <laughs> but I have quite a collection now. And these ones I buy for myself because they're independently created. I can't add them to my Amazon wish list. And rightly so, because you probably won't want to spend this much money when you donate a deck to me, I promise you. I think these were like £50, which is more than six, $50, probably $60. Um, but they are beautiful. Look at those edges. Gorgeous. Right. And don't let the name of the deck deceive you. They're no more painful to look at than any other deck. Okay, pal, who, what would spirit like you to know about your love life? Remember, this is a timeless reading. Make a note in the comments of which pile you've watched so that if you need to revert to this video for the same question at a later date, you can pick a different pile. You know which one you've seen already. The full in reverse. Eight of Swords in reverse. Temperance in reverse. The Ten of Cups in reverse. So a lot of blocked energies here. The Six of Cups in reverse. Let me just check they are shuffled. Yeah, they're not all upside down. I'm going to give them another whistle shuffle just so you can be sure. Page of Wands in reverse, so slim. <laughs> the Hermit, wow. And the Magician. Wow. So, for a lot of you watching this, you may have been longing for a new beginning and a new relationship. I feel like you've been through a very painful relationship breakdown. And it's taken you a long time to move through that grief. I feel like you're just coming out the other side of it. You're getting to a stage where you can reflect on what happened. I say this while I'm still pulling cards. It's just coming through quite quickly. Um, we've got Warrior Woman. Leap, Pillar of Light, and Imrama. I'm going to get some of these message cards. I wrote these myself, messages from Spirit. Learn to appreciate where you are and how far you've come instead of being so focused on where you are not. Your ego is louder than your heart right now. Meditation, meditation, meditation. Time is not run, running out. Trust in the divine plan. Everything is as it's meant to be. So it does feel like there's, yeah, there's been this period of grieving. It's really a period of rebalancing because I feel like you went through a very messy, very painful relationship breakdown. And despite feeling inside like you really want to, you know, have a beautiful new relationship, at a subconscious level, there are very deep, deep, deep layers of resistance 
because you know the first card out here is the fall in reverse and it's so interesting to me that this card is that leap of faith that new beginning and it says here leap you go first the universe will catch you again you know very similar images of jumping off that cliff but with the fall in reverse again there's this resistance and we've got the soulmate card also the six of cups so i feel like you've met someone and you feel this deep connection to them but they have not treated you how you believe you deserve to be treated. And you do, you do deserve to be treated well. You're right to believe that. And so it feels like you're the runner. The resistance comes from you. That, you know, you've demonstrated non-acceptance of this person because they're not able to offer you what it is that you desire. And you wouldn't necessarily see this as resistance. I'm hearing that you would see it as defending, you know, fairly healthy boundaries. Now, there is a, a connection here to the energies of par one. Um, there's no suggestion of a karmic partner with your other party, but the energies of surrendering and the spiritual journey might be relevant to you in par one, so it might help you to watch that as well, because I'm feeling a similar kind of resistance here. And I feel like you've looked up all of the weird signs, symptoms and synchronicities that you've been experiencing with this person, and you've gone, no. Nah that's not for me. I don't want to get involved in all of that woo-woo crazy stuff, yeah. But it does say here in Rama, where are you being called to journey to? You know, you're, you're being shown a new path and a new way of being. And it feels like there is tremendous resistance to this. You believe that the man or the masculine energy should be doing the chasing and the, the, the running but in a soulful connection like this, in the twin flame connection, the divine feminine is the torchbearer. She lights the path. And it does say you go first. You know, the universe will catch you. And we've also got the hermit here holding up that light. So it just feels like, you know, there is a reluctance here with the eight of swords in reverse to, to release those yourself from the very limiting beliefs. And I feel like you've got religious beliefs that perhaps contradicts what the twin flame journey means there's a reluctance to get on this path you know with the page of ones in reverse it may feel like you know in your mind you're already very spiritual that you're on your own spiritual path and that this whole twin flame concept doesn't necessarily align with that um i'm hearing that you need to be a bit more humble and recognize there is always more to learn and it does say here that your ego is louder than your heart right now you're also being asked to learn to appreciate where you are, you know, rather than being focused on lack. That is what causes you so much pain that you think you should be in a different position. You know, you still hold this idea that this isn't how your life was meant to work out, that it's all wrong. There's so much regret. You beat yourself up for decisions made that you perceive now as having been wrong. You know, it's all that I could have, should have energy. And what if, what if, what if, when the future's concerned. So there's a huge non-acceptance for your past. And there's huge non-acceptance for the future that you see coming. Um, but in reality, the, the non-acceptance is in you. It's just a belief system that can be adjusted. And that will release you from the pain that you're feeling. So I do feel like you, you know, this has really caused you to question your spirituality. And with the hermit... These are the only two cards upright is the hermit and the magician. You know, you're being shown that the way to bring things back into balance is to learn to fill your own cup. Now, temperance does exactly that. You can see here that she's moving water and fire from one cup to another. And this is a number five card. It also connects the hierophant, the card of high learning, high wisdom, and this is also about balance, spiritual balance. You know, she's got one foot in the water, one foot on the ground. You can see that the challenge of her journey through those mountains, there's a very clearly discernible path. And actually, in most tarot decks, temperance is the only card that features mountains with a path. And you can see the, here the crown, which represents the crown chakra. You know, that spiritual aspect of self. And of course, we have this, this angel here. So this is in reverse. You know, it feels like, you know, you are not as in balance as you would like to think you are. And there is definitely self-love def self deficit here. 
or an inability, an inability to fill your own cup through your connection to source. And this has caused you to really withdraw. But it's not withdrawing in a bad way. I do feel like you are doing a lot of inner reflection, that you are seeking that light from the inside, but that there is some clash with your religious or cultural beliefs here that stops you from kind of moving forward. And again, the guidance here is meditation, meditation, which is exactly what the hermit does. If you're not sure how to meditate, there is um, a playlist on my channel called Twin Flame Healing. And the first one on the list is how to meditate. So you may find that video useful for helping you figure out how to heal and bring yourself back into balance through meditation. So spirit is also saying that you can trust that you're going to have a happy and lasting relationship. But this need not be your focus right now. You have all the skills and tools to make that happen. But it's the journey towards that that matters and not the end goal. And it does say that time is not running out. Trust in the divine plan. Everything is as it's meant to be. And you do have a higher mission. And you probably didn't want to hear this either. Again, I feel like you're, you know, you're really, you've been very much indoctrinated to follow a specific set of rules or dogma when it comes to spirituality and it feels like you're very reluctant to break down those barriers and allow yourself to have a broader perspective but you it says here have you answered your deepest calling and your vibration is rising you are the oracle so it feels like you're beginning to discover these new aspects of your spiritual self and even though there is resistance and anxiety surrounding that and in particular concerning your connection to this person, you know, spirit is saying, realistically, you've already trained for this. You've been training this for this for a whole lifetime because you already know how to speak to God. You already know how to pray. You already understand the power of spirit and the power of light. You're just being asked to recognize now that you are actually a divine being yourself and that the, the doctrine that you've been fed is somewhat limiting and you know, a few of my spirit guides are actually Christian and they reminded me that the Bible, it's stories about light workers. You know, they're just healers and light workers and prophets. Um, but it was written by man. It is not a document that was created by the hands of God or indeed Jesus. And that over the years, over millennia, it has been distorted um, to, to, to suit the needs of, um, you know, whatever corrupt leadership existed within our society at those times and so they're asking you to look beyond what was written by man and to communicate directly with spirit through meditation through prayer because you already have the power and the skills and the understanding to help you do that yeah you've been training for this for a long time but you need to let go of this idea that it's somehow wrong to branch outside of your existing spiritual beliefs you're free to believe in whatever you want and to, to move with whatever trust with your heart. Now, I'm hearing judgment here. The judgment is a problem for you, the judgment of others. And we've got the two of swords in reverse in response to that, which means you don't even have to consider the opinions of others. Furthermore, you don't have to discuss your spiritual beliefs with anyone. What goes on inside your head and between you and spirit is of no concern to anyone else. And you will find like-minded souls that won't judge you and that are accepting. And you can still, you can still adhere to your, you know, your um, existing religious practices. If that means going to church or prayer or you know, working with others, you don't have to tell them that you've, you've got ideas beyond you know, their, their comprehension. You don't have to share that. You're only here to answer your calling to be true to yourself. There is no obligation here to be true to anybody else. So I'm hearing that the friendship group in particular is a challenge here, and also that your person may not be spiritual at all, um, and you're very apprehensive to introduce this concept to them, and that's understandable. There's no need for you to do this at this stage. I always think when it comes to discussing the spiritual nature of a connection, every individual is unique there's no right or wrong way to do it there's no right or wrong time to do it and there's no predefined reaction or response that you're going to get every dm reacts differently mine knew already when i told him so you know not all of them are going to be shocked a lot of them recognize the weird signs but i am guided that at this time you just need to concentrate 
on cultivating and nurturing a, a warm and supportive friendship with this person. You know, um, I'm really drawn to the eye. Here, this person has got an eye on the in their back, you know, which is, is about seeing things from different perspectives and recognizing that even though your friendship group or your friendship with this person may not necessarily fit in with all of your beliefs, that you can still grow together. They're in a pumpkin patch here. You can celebrate life together. You can see all sides of this journey and you don't need to judge them just like you don't need to invite their judgment. So there is a need to kind of pull back and accept friendship in your connection at the moment and to trust that that new beginning with that two of cups energy is coming your way. Um, now the two of cups is the beginning stages of union and I feel like once you take that leap of faith and trust the universe to catch you, your journey is going to move at an accelerated pace because I said you've, well, you've been training to, for this for lifetimes, but in particular in this lifetime, you have been taught faith. You've been taught a deep, deep faith and deep understanding of what it means to be spiritual and faithful. And if you watch part one, I talk about faith as being a key thing on this journey and you've already got that nailed down. That's something that you're already really adept at. And that's half the battle won. It really is. I do feel like you're going to get rapid inbound communication from your person. You know, they're, they're coming at you. And I feel like... Yeah, there's been harsh words between you two in the past. Someone rejected someone... It may, I, I do think it may have been you rejecting them because they weren't necessarily, as I said, living up to your ideals or expectations. But we've got the Five of Pentacles and the Queen of Swords. And you can see here, you know, that this person sat out in the cold. There's another person here that's in very tatty clothing coming to support them. And I feel like you both met each other when you were a low air. Perhaps you both come out of relationships. I'm just noticing is, there's two cards here. They're stuck together. This pain will not last. <laughs> Stay strong, keep going. Look at that, that was stuck to that and sneaking out. Let's fill that in where it's ripped. This pain will not last. So you needed to hear that as well. I feel like you both met each other when you were both at a very low ebb and you've supported one another. You know, you both weren't in a good place. And because you weren't in a good place and you were both operating from the perspective of codependency, there were some very harsh words exchanged here where expectations weren't met. So I do feel like this person wants to come in and communicate about that. And they would really very much like to start again. You know, they haven't given up on you, even though you may think you've given up on them. And let's be real, you've not given up on them because you're watching this reading, which perfectly demonstrates your commitment and um, reluctance or um, inability to actually move on from this connection because you're here asking about this person now, right? So what are they feeling about you? What messages have they got for you? This is a new beginning. There is no going back. It certainly is. I haven't forgotten you. I think about you all the time. This is so weird, but these actually came up in par one as well. I don't know, and that one, I don't know what a healthy relationship looks like. I need more time. As long as you're trying, I'm staying. But if you want me to, I will let you go. One more. I get so carried away with the energy and then I panic and run. It's intense and beautiful, but also scary. So I feel like it freaks you both out. Um, and... You know, as I said, that, that, that the spiritual nature of it is particularly scary for you and probably for your person as well. But you can't deny these very intense energies. And this person really does want you. And they are coming back in. And I do see you moving into union energies. You know, are you ready? You know, to get ready, you need to surrender. You need to answer your soul's calling and recognize that you are an oracle. This means you're a medium, you're a reader, you're clairvoyant. Maybe you want to do some of my classes and really investigate that. I have got one. I'll be doing my mediumship for beginners classes again, how to connect with your spirit, guys. It's a beautiful introduction um, to communing with the spirit that way. Um, but you've got important work to do in this community, in the spiritual community that requires you to channel, um, you know, to bring forward messages from spirit. And I feel really strongly that this is so inherent in your existing 
skills. You, you, you were born to do this. You already know how to do this. You already have these conversations with God. You just don't trust them or recognize them as being real. And your, all of your religious beliefs have taught you that that's wrong or sinful. And you just need to let that go. You know, you're not hurting anyone. The only person you have to um, please here is you. Let's get some final cards. What blockages do you need to be aware of? Karma. Okay, what's the karma? Surrender to what? Right, okay. So there is some karma. And we did have the Queen of Swords out for you, which is, again, that very confrontational, aggressive, cold-cutting communication and interactions and there's a karmic lesson for you that's not necessarily attached to a specific person but you've been taught that true strength and assertiveness is in um, your ability to stand up for yourself and to be confrontational or aggressive or to really tell someone and you know call them out or cut them off or you know to be really firm but the strength card when it's upright depicts this woman she's got that twin flame symbol of infinity above her head she's restraining the beast not with force but with her big compassionate and loving heart you know that she can hold this lion and open his mouth and have him surrender to her through love not through aggression not through force she's not getting a gun out <laughs> you know she is doing this through love and you're being asked to surrender to your own big heart. Stop recognizing it as a weakness. You may perceive yourself as someone that cares too much, but you're being asked to surrender to this truth because there is a karmic lesson that needs to be brought back into balance and resolved here um, within you that's specifically connected to that. I wasn't going to get charms in this reading, but I do feel really drawn to get them for you. Apparently, you need some signs. Let's see what they're saying. Yeah, we've got bitch spray. So the Queen of Swords in reverse is the bitch, you know, and however spiritual you think you are, remember your ego is louder than your heart right now. All of us sin, okay? We all sin. None of us is perfect. None of us is infallible to pain, anger, suffering, and all of the ugly behaviors that those feelings can create within us. And so you're being asked to to really be honest with yourself about this aspect of who you are and how you interact with others and to recognize that that isn't in line with your spiritual beliefs or values either. So a powerful message there. It's time to get to work with the bumblebee, to bring yourself out of the dark, to recognize that you can embody the light. It's not sinning. To, to look outside the realms of your, the spiritual teachings that you've received through whatever dogma or doctrine that you've been exposed to. We've also got this little FBI one. I always think this is a really funny one. This is The Simpsons, but this is Fox Mulder um, from when he appeared in The Simpsons. Now, I don't know what this means to you. For me, this is about detective work, for looking beyond what, you know, the FBI doesn't just investigate crime or cases. They're really digging deep into the really interesting stuff that requires you to, to uncover deeper layers and to go that bit deeper. Um, so for me, this is about detective work, but there may be a link here to you to either that program, to the symptoms, to, to the police or FBI in general. You know, this might be a very affirming sign for you. But for me, this is certainly asking you to investigate more deeply what's happening here. And again, trust you're on a journey. Take that leap of faith. What's really interesting to me about this map is that that aeroplane, you know, the, the X marks the spot and the spot is in the green, which is the color of the heart chakra. You know, this is a journey of love, of understanding love, of learning unconditional love and then of spreading unconditional love, which is really beautiful. And you also got the rose quartz heart, which for me really affirms that beautiful message. Um, it may be helpful to you to have some rose quartz nearby as well. These little tiny stones are fabulous for putting in your bra. <laughs> That's where I keep mine. So thank you so much for tuning in. I really hope that was helpful for you today. There isn't an extended reading today, but I will be back tomorrow with some more. If you enjoyed this reading, please do hit the like button. It really super duper helps my channel to grow. And if you would like to see more content like this, please tap the subscribe button, the little bell icon, and you will get a notification every time I post. 
So thank you so much, guys. I'll see you next time. And don't forget to join me on Instagram as well. You can find me over there at Happy Souls 1111. And if you haven't already, it might help you to join my Facebook group. Um, it's for Ascending Souls. It's just a networking group. There's no spam or ads over there. I'm pretty strict about that. And it, it's just going to help you connect to other like-minded souls on this journey and to get that support you need. You won't be the first person that's arrived at this journey thinking, oh my God, this is this is a load of crazy woo-woo and I don't want to do this. <laughs> I think we all feel that when we arrive here. But if you had pre-existing spiritual beliefs and that this very much contradicts that, then I do understand that can be very challenging. So, you know, come and join us over there. You will get some support. Everyone's willing to listen and to help. So I'll see you soon, part two. Right, part three. You have chosen the crystal unicorn tarot with, oh, sorry, wobby camera with hexagon quartz so let's do this what does spirit want you to know about love now most of my readings are very spiritually inclined that is to say that i mostly read for people who are experiencing spiritual connections occasionally that's not the case and i don't know why i'm saying this because i don't normally say this so i'm assuming that perhaps pile three isn't as spiritual as others we'll see i don't know I'm sure that people that aren't on the spiritual journey find their way to my readings. Um, my readings are very self-healing focused anyway, but they do invariably refer to twin flames and soulmates. So if that's not you, you know, there will still be messages here that may resonate. You can just disregard all the woo-woo stuff I share. But I don't know why I felt guided to say that as I begin today. Anyway, whilst I'm shuffling, I've got new classes and webinars being launched this week. If you want to be one of the first to get a heads up when they go live so you can get first dibs on those places, um, subscribe on my website or join my Facebook group. That's where I will announce um, the classes first and the webinars. And then I will follow up by announcing them on YouTube. But they do sell out very quickly. So I'll be teaching mediumship as usual, tarot, but I'm introducing some new classes as well. And the webinars are kind of one-off classes, which are you know, more cost-effective and accessible to those of you that can't afford the full courses and still allows you to be part of a, a group and community, which is really lovely. So if you'd like to learn with me, don't forget to join me over on Facebook or add yourself to my subscriber list. Right, let's keep these because they fell out. The nine of wands in reverse. Justice in reverse, the fall in reverse, and the nine of swords. The high priestess in reverse. The page of pentacles in reverse. The seven of swords. And the six of pentacles in reverse. So, I feel like you found your way to this reading and that you actually wouldn't perceive yourself as being on a spiritual journey at all. You've been involved in a connection with someone that didn't quite get off the ground because they betrayed you. And there was some kind of really ugly deceit or betrayal here. This person wasn't honest. Now, let's see, what, what, were they, what weren't they honest about? The Eight of Swords in Reverse and the Sun. So probably their mental state as well. Um, you know, this person was wearing masks and, and pretending to be someone they weren't. It, the, the deceit could you know, be much broader than that for you. But I'm hearing that there was definitely, there could have been something to do with children here as well, but not everything was brought into the light. And this person certainly seems to have struggled with their mental health and perhaps wasn't as honest with you about, you know, where they're at at a personal level. But for sure, there was some kind of dishonesty, um, betrayal or deceit that meant this connection didn't quite get off the ground. And yet, despite this, you can't get over this person. You cannot move on from them and, you know, you dream about them. This is bringing you sleepless nights. This person hasn't apologised. I do think for some of you there may have been a third party, although um, we've got the justice card, which can indicate karma or karmic relationships. Um, I still get the impression that there's children involved here as well for some of you. Um and I feel like you really tried for this person. When you met them, you felt like you'd met someone really special. And you gave and you gave and you gave, but they just didn't reciprocate or return um, what you gave in equal measure. There was definitely an imbalance here in terms of who, were, who was investing what in this connection. And so you had to pull back. And despite pulling back, 
um, you cannot move on from this person. It feels like you cannot forget them. Now, the reason you've been drawn to this reading and probably why there was the intro that there was, was because you're not seeing that this is in fact a spiritual connection and that much of the reason you've not been able to move on from this person is because it's a spiritual connection. And what's really fascinating about this is that I kind of had that instinct before I began. Um, we've got the high priestess in reverse in here. And this is about being disconnected from your intuition and higher knowing. And for me, it's also indicating that, you know, with this nine of wands in reverse, this energy of not giving up, of not being able to let go, um, you know, the high priestess in reverse for me also very clearly indicates, and I am seeing two 11s on this card, you know, there and there, the pillars, um, that you you perhaps had no awareness of what this, what the real truth behind this connection is, which is probably that you're twin flames or some kind of soulmates. Um, so my channel is all about twin flames and soulmates. And if you Google that concept, you will find a tr tremendous amount of information about how you can recognize um, when you are involved in that kind of connection. So you might find stuff that resonates with you. Alternatively, you can come over and ask on my group. I'm sure there's lots of happy souls there that would be happy to guide you. But, you know, this all came through before I've even got all the cards out. So I'm going to pull some more cards out for you. Um, so, yeah, I feel like, you know, right now there is some kind of unresolved karma here and that there's been no communication or apology um, that you weren't able to see eye to eye and resolve this. Min Tan Can, longing for home, belonging, the original light workers. So you may have may have felt that you, you know, had arrived home. Star seed, what lights you up? Don't dim to fit in. And share your voice. Come out of the cave, persecution and expression. So this is really powerful. I'm going to get some of these messages from spirit cards for you as well. You are confused about what unconditional love means. Sacred union with the light. Support sacred union with your person. Pay attention to the triggers that are showing you where you need to heal. And two came out here. You are not being honest with yourself. And your person is reflecting back at you the shadow you need to acknowledge. Okay. So when you met this person, you may just feel like a sense of belonging or of being home. And now that they're not there, it literally feels like a homesickness. But it's not actually them you're homesick for. You know, you've got two cards here about, um, you know, it says the original light workers and what lights you up about star seeds. And in reality, what they've connected you to is not the home that resides within them, but the home that connects you to all of all of all that is, you know, to the universal energy of love. That's what you're actually homesick for. Now, I feel like you're part of a social network or familial group that is very demonstrates a huge amount of non-acceptance or judgment for these kind of woo-woo concepts. And it does say here, don't dim to fit in. How are you dimming your light in order to fit in? It may be that you've already stumbled upon the twin flame concept and immediately disregarded it as being too goddamn weird. But it does say here that come out of the cave, persecution and expression, and you may have felt that you just had no one to talk to about this, you know, and you've not really had much guidance. You may have known you're a twin flame, but doubted it, not been sure, not sure if you're on your path. There definitely is a lot of confusion here and certainly about what unconditional love means. And I do feel that you came into this connection with very unhealthy boundaries because with the six of pentacles in reverse, it was indicated there that there was a dramatic lack of reciprocity, that, you know, there was not a healthy balance give and take in this connection. And people with unhealthy boundaries, i.e. to protect themselves, tend to have unhealthy boundaries in the opposite eye direction as well. You know, because they don't command respect for their own boundaries, they don't see that other people would have the same boundaries either or requirement for them. So you can often be offended, upset or experience feelings of rejection when you are encountering other people's boundaries, which I feel is also a big part of what may have happened between you and this person. 
you know, they may have felt justified in not telling you everything about themselves at the beginning of this journey and that they tro- chose to withhold aspects of self. Now, I don't know what it was that they withheld. So certainly, you know, if they were married, they were in another relationship, that's not something they should have kept secret. I'm not justifying that. But there could have been smaller details here that you may have got hung up on or felt. Um, you know, there was something that they wouldn't communicate that you felt they needed to this could have been an expression of some kind as well you want this person back you've not been able to let them go and you hate that because you see that they don't treat you they didn't treat you right and you don't see why you should entertain or be with someone that doesn't treat you right and that's quite right too but when you come into union with yourself you will be able to command Um, the right kind of relationship from a much healthier place and this is what moves you and this person back together if this person is your soulmate or twin flame you know you were divinely destined to be together and the universe is always conspiring to make that so this person has triggered you and you may have been really shocked at how painful parting from them was especially if you hadn't known them for long and again that's very typical of a twin connection but that pain is actually showing you where you need to heal so you need to pay attention because to re- respond so i guess harshly in the face of you know what may have been a very short interaction with this person really does reveal that there were deeper wounds beneath the surface that have been agitated by your interaction with this person and that's what we mean by triggers you're being asked to recognize that they were just prodding and poking and a wound that was already there to bring it to your attention so that you can heal it and you're not being entirely honest with yourself because you tell yourself that you don't want this person that you don't even like them. And indeed, you may not understand why you feel so magnetized and you can't forget them. And I understand the energy because that's how it was for me in the beginning. It can be very maddening. Um, But you need to be honest. And you may not have been able to identify the strong feelings you experienced as love because how they treated you didn't necessarily demonstrate loving interaction. But, you know, that is what is in your heart. And it says here, your person is reflecting back at you, the shadow you need to acknowledge. So this suggests that the behaviors that you disliked in them were actually a reflection of the shadow aspects or darker sides to your own personality and self that you need to be aware of. And for sure, you know, it does feel like, let me get a, I want to know what happens. What, what actually happened? The page of swords. So yeah childish communication the knight of wands so this may have been a casual connection that never got firmed up five of pentacles in reverse queen of cups and the tower in reverse so i feel like this person just disappeared they came in they charmed the pants off you you had a very intense very sexual very powerful chemistry um yeah and there was this rejection i feel like even though you kept a lid on that cup and you weren't, you know, you were trying to play it cool, you know, there was a lot of love there. But I feel like with this tower moment, it didn't come to an end necessarily because of any kind of explosive argument or interaction. It feels like actually that may have been avoided and there was just a cutting off. Someone ghosted someone. But neither of you approached this connection from a place of authenticity anyway. You were both playing the game. You were both playing it cool. And neither one of you was communicating really, really honestly. So, you know, there is a need here to to recognize your part in that as well. You weren't being honest about, you know, what you wanted either. You were just reacting to this person's energy and waiting for them to make the first move. So what's the guidance for you as far as this connection is concerned? The emperor. So this person probably is your divine masculine. You need to choose this journey. You need to trust in a reunion. And you're going to need to collaborate with this person to heal. At the moment, you are very emotionally imbalanced. And that is something that needs to be addressed. You have to learn to fill your own cup and to love yourself before you can give that to someone else. That's what unconditional love means. Now, this is a really short video within which to present the twin flame journey to you.
and what it means and what healing is required and how it works. So I'm gonna to have to leave you to do some of your own research, but there is an article on my website called Return to One, which may really help you understand that ultimately, whilst the goal is to come into union with this person, you need to choose this journey for yourself. This is about bringing yourself emotional fulfillment. This is about learning to love and accept yourself so that you can have healthy, loving, balanced relationships. There is a new beginning, but you have to choose it. You can't keep running away from this connection. You need to surrender to what it is and to what is being presented. And that's when you're gonna see positive change. It's not gonna be easy. It's gonna take time to learn to fill your cup and the energy and the journey can at sometimes be turbulent, but your you know, spirit is encouraging you to be brave. Now, I want to get some messages from your person for you as well. Listen to the words in songs. They explain how I'm feeling about you. I wish I knew how to love you the way you deserve to be loved. I am lost. I trigger you to show you where you need to heal. It's not personal, so that's come out twice. I don't know what a healthy relationship looks like. I need more time to learn. This came out in all piles today. So, you know, this person cared about you very much, but they are just as lost. They have their own painful journey to navigate. They don't know how to love unconditionally either, and they certainly don't love themselves. This person feels very unworthy. You know, they, don't, you know, they saw you and they were like, wow, I don't deserve someone like this. I can never know how to look after or treat someone like this. They were very triggered by you also. I've got hiccups. So there's a blockage in the throat chakra here as well. And it does say here, share your voice, come out of the cave, persecution and expression. So it may be that you've been in a relationship before, or this could go back to your familial experiences where you, know, you, you weren't heard no one listened to you or you were punished when you did express yourself or blamed or you know your expression of your feelings was distorted and twisted to make you look like the baddie or something like that but this person's asking you to look at the songs and the music that you shared um, and that you know this is how they explain how they're feeling about you so hopefully you have some recollection or you know what songs you know were I guess relevant to your, your interactions with them I wish I knew how to love you, you know, I'm lost. And they don't know what a healthy relationship looks like either. So they never hurt you intentionally, but they don't know how to treat someone like you. They don't know how to be loving and authentic and real. And even though you think you do and you have these lofty expectations, you're not being honest with yourself either because you're not emotionally balanced or loving in an emotionally healthy, balanced way either. You know, you are both reflecting the same wounds at one another. So I really hope that helps part three. There isn't an extended reading today, but I will be back with one for you tomorrow. But thank you so much for tuning in. I appreciate it so much. And if you did enjoy this reading, please hit the like button. Let me know down below if that resonated for you. And if you've got any questions, I, I will do my best. I, it's difficult to reply to all the, the comments because I get a lot, but I will do my best to answer your questions. And if you want to join us in the Facebook group, you can find a link to that in the description box below and you'll find lots of happy souls over there that are, would be delighted to um, introduce you to how this all works. Don't forget to subscribe if you want to see more content like this. Tap the little bell icon and you will get a notification every time I post. So thank you so much for tuning in. It's a pleasure as always. Lots of love. Bye.